How does the Quran treat people who don't respect it? There's a really interesting story that a sister had shared about her journey in connecting to the Quran and in fact starting to memorize the Quran. She was with this teacher who was very strict when it came to timeliness, when it came to punctuality. The student's class time was right after the morning prayer, after Fajr. So she left the house when it was dark sometimes and she would basically uh, run a few minutes late she learned her lesson the day she was driving in a rainstorm. She texted her teacher that she was running a few minutes late and her teacher told her to just go home. So she was frustrated because she spent the entire night preparing for a big Quran exam and she got kind of maybe lost or delayed uh, in the rain and she made sure to never be late to class again. Fast forward. In her student journey in terms of connecting to the Quran, she prepared what she was going to read one day from Surah At-Tawbah. She prepared them really well. Right before she left the house, her mother asked her for help and she said, please don't leave without doing the dishes. The student, who is now terrified of being late, responded by asking her mother if she could please do them when she returned home. She promised her mother and she basically told her, can I just please do them when I get home? I'm going to be late. Her mother said, please do them now. She asked her to do them before she left the house. She said, you were supposed to do them last night. So please do them before you leave. Now the student's mother had not yet become Muslim. So she thought to herself, she doesn't understand the importance of the Qur'an because she is not Muslim. The student is thinking about her mother. She doesn't know how important this is because she's not Muslim. And she doesn't understand how much trouble I'll be in if I'm late. I'm going to make this up to her later and I'll do even extra things to make her extra happy. So she said, I'm so sorry, mom. I really can't be late. I promise I'll do them when I get back. And she left the house. That student sat in front of her teacher ready to recite what she had prepared all night. When her teacher asked her to start, she couldn't remember the first word of the, the suwar she was reciting all night. So this happens sometimes. That's not a problem. Her teacher gave her the first word as a reminder. Walaw. This is the first word. She gave her the first word. Student is saying walaw and then she's trying to remember. And she's repeating it, thinking this will jog my memory. She's still blank. The teacher looked at her surprised. Her student came this unprepared for the first time. So she gave her more of the ayah. And she added more to it. Walau aradul khuruj. The student repeated that. But it was so odd. It's as though her memory of the entire first ayah was just completely white. Like she could not remember the ayah at all. So the teacher told her the rest of the ayah. She started to read her the entire first ayah, which is very odd for a Quran student to prepare so well for a weekly program and come in and not be ready at all. The student was unable, so the teacher asked her what's going on what happened she said I think I need to go home and do the dishes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins Surah Al-Rahman by telling us what Ar-Rahman Allama Al-Quran the most merciful who taught the Quran it is the sunnah of learning the Quran to have a teacher and not and this should not uh, basically stop us from uh, memorizing the Quran on our own but we should try to take uh, as much access as we can and resources that we have around us. Now, Alhamdulillah, with the blessing of the internet, many people are able to learn how to read Quran online. So people have teachers. The Prophet ﷺ was taught by Jibreel alayhi salam, right? He would memorize the Quran. He would review it with him every single year in Ramadan. The last Ramadan of his life, he reviewed it with him twice. So he had a teacher as well, and that was Angel Jibreel alayhi salam. So we should be looking for qualified teachers to study Quran with. And we recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our ultimate teacher in terms of who we should be and how to be successful. We cannot expect to be successful human beings in memorizing and developing a relationship with the Quran if we don't put in any effort into applying it. The Quran teaches respect and kindness and honor to one's parents, whether or not they are Muslim. The Quran teaches us to be better people. And so when this student disrespected her mother, by leaving the house, even though she had been expecting to do it the night before, the morning of. She said, the student said in her own words, it's as though Allah was teaching me that lesson, which is, don't think you're going to be successful memorizing the words of Allah while simultaneously intentionally doing the opposite of the words that Allah is teaching you. This is the lesson she took from it. Now, through each of our individual journeys with the Quran, we'll find that when we put our heart into it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us, guides us, and helps us to see our flaws why do you want to see your flaws? So that you can work on it, so that you can improve. When you take the Quran as a source of tarbiyah, development, you can become the greatest human being in this world.
your greatest potential is achieved through the Quran. My question to you is, what do you take of the Quran to help you with your tarbiyah, with your development as a believer?